Hi everybody, Miss Mary here. Today we are going to do program on concoctions. That's mixtures and cool stuff all about science. And today we're also going to be using some technology and we'll be learning a little bit of math too. So, and science of course. Here's what we're going to try to do first. I would like to do something called absorption. That means that something absorbs a liquid. So today we're going to do two things just now. We're going to use a paper towel and we're going to use a sponge. So there's a bigger paper towel than the smaller sponge, but I'm wondering which one is going to absorb water better. And the way we're going to know how that happens is that I have the same amount of liquid and I have colored it so that you can see it really well of water and food coloring. And they're both about the same amount in each one of these cups. These are the empty cups. And so when we put the paper towel in the water and we put the sponge in the water and we take them out, I'm gonna squeeze them both into the empty cups and we're gonna see which one has the most water, which one is the most absorbing. Which one do you think it's gonna be? The large paper towel or the small sponge? Let's see. First, I'm gonna roll up the paper towel so that it will fit into the water. And I'm going to stick it all the way down so that I don't see any more white part. I'm gonna let it sit there for a minute. Then I'm gonna take the sponge and I'm gonna put that all the way in the water so that I can't see any yellow or green part. And let that sit for a minute. Now, what do you think is gonna happen? Which one do you think is gonna have the most water come out of it? We're going to squeeze the water and extract it from the material that we put in. So look, I pulled out the paper towel and it did take out some of the water. Now I'm going to squeeze the paper towel and extract the water and put it into the cup. Squeezing really hard. So I wanna get out as much as possible because we're gonna see which one has the most water. Okay, so that's what I was able to extract from the paper towel. Now let's see about the sponge. So I'm gonna take the sponge out and there's that much water left. And I'm gonna squeeze the sponge into the cup as hard as I can because I wanna extract as much as possible out of there. Okay, now let's compare. So we have the sponge water and we have the water from the paper towel. Which one absorbed more? That's right, the paper towel. And look, it's less than half of what the paper towel was able to extract. And then if we go back to the ones that we originally started with, there's less water in the paper towel one than there is in the sponge one. So it's true. The paper towel absorbed more than the sponge. Now we're going to check out some other things that do absorption. Hi, so now we're gonna do what's called water beads. I have these water beads that I purchased and I got them online. Sometimes you can find them in the Dollar Tree store or other places that are around the floral department because they are beads that will absorb water and become bigger and then keep the flowers alive in your vases. But today, these are really cool. They're colored, I got them online. They'll be in your handout. And they are really tiny little beads, super tiny. 
And when you add water to them, something cool happens. These absorb water. It's a polymer material that absorbs water, so it's man-made. I got them in a bag this big, and all it takes is this much, which is about a teaspoon, and a quart of water. A quart is a lot. And if you fill up a container with a quart of water and you add it to these, or you add these to the quart of water, and then you wait six to eight hours, something amazing happens. They turn into this. Cool water jelly beads. This was a teaspoon like this that turned into this and it's so cool. I feel slimy balls. They're wet, they're colorful, and they're super cool. And I have another polymer substance that we're going to look at next, but I wanted to just show you something that you could do with these water beads because they're different colors. There's pink, I'm gonna put them in my egg carton because I like to recycle things. I'm gonna do all pink in that one container. Then there is a purple one. Nope, sorry, that one's blue. Then there is a white one. Then there is an orange one. And I think that might be all of them in this particular kind. Oh, there's a little darker blue one, I think, too. Oh, that's the same. So I'm gonna put all the same water beads in there, and I can use technology, too. I can use a spoon, or I can use tweezers. That's really cool to pull them out. It makes it a little harder, and it's also good for me to learn writing skills, holding something small like this in my fingers, and using my pincer grasp to move them and put them in all of the little cups. These bounce too, a little bit. I'm gonna bounce it in this cup so you can see. Whoa, there it goes. And if you squeeze them really hard, well, then they're gonna bounce or they squish. This guy just wants to bounce, but sometimes you can change the consistency of them and squeeze them and it breaks up into like a little jelly thing. But I like to keep them whole and I like to rub my hands in them. They're so fun. And this is really cold and cool for the summer or any time of year. I highly recommend them. They're so fun. But of course not for children under age five or any child that puts things in their mouths because while they might be safe, they're probably more of a choking hazard. So I would say no to putting things like this in your mouth, but you can certainly play with them and sort them. Let's look at something else. Okay, here we are doing absorption again. So remember how I said that was a polymer material that was man-made? I have another type of polymer material. It's a powder. It's called InstaSnow. Steve Spangler sells it. You can get it online. And I put some in a test tube and I have some more technology. So test tubes are technology. This is called a pipette and it pulls water and extracts the water from a container. And then I can expel water from it when you squeeze it. And this is another one, but this is more of an eyedropper. So I can squeeze it and bring water up into it. And then I can squeeze the water into the test tube. So again, they both do the same thing. One takes more water than the other one does. So we'll try both of them and see which one works best. So again, I have this Insta Snow in here. It's dry. It's powdered. And the cool thing about this, are you ready? When I add water to it, it expands 100 times the size of what it is now. Cool, right? 
Are you ready to watch it absorb and become a hundred times bigger? I am. All right, so we're gonna start with the little pipette first. I'm gonna squeeze it, put it into the water, and then let go, and the water goes up into the pipette. Now, are you ready? Are you watching? Let's see what happens to the Insta Snow. Will it grow? I'm gonna keep going more and more. That's two. That's three. That's four. That's five. It's not really doing much, is it? Let's use the big one. Oh, wait, I see it is growing a little bit. Do you see the lines on there? This is the one line and then there's another line up there. Let's see, when I squeeze this into it, what happens? Okay, now I see, here it goes. It's getting bigger. Now it's up to the second line. I wonder if it'll grow any more. I'm gonna put it down here. Let's do another one, put the big one. Are you ready? Okay, remember it's powder and it's down below the first line. I'm gonna squeeze my big one and pour it in. Whoa, did it get bigger? Is it getting bigger? Is it getting bigger? Oh my goodness, it's so much bigger. It's absorbing all the water and it's getting higher and higher in the test tube. Will it reach all the way to the top? I don't know. You know what I'm wondering? I'm wondering if there's some dry powder on the bottom. I'm gonna use my pipette as a tool and I'm gonna stir it up a little bit down there. I'm gonna see if maybe there's some powder on the bottom that hasn't been able to get wet yet. Maybe we'll be able to get all the way to the top. Are you ready? Let's see if that stirring helped at all. Is it getting any bigger? I don't think so. You know, science is all about practicing things and wondering and trying different things. Let's try one more and see. Wait a minute. I think it is working. Let's try one more. Do you think one more will get us to the top? I don't know. Nope, not all the way yet. How about one more? It's still in there. It's still not all the way to the top yet. And I'm noticing that there's some powder down here. It's different colored. Let me stir that up a little bit and see if maybe that will make it change. Let's try using the pipette to go down then with some water. I'm gonna go all the way down and put water down there. What is happening? Oh, it's cool. Wait, it's coming out the top. It's getting bigger. I think I figured it out. There's powder on the bottom that didn't get wet because the other stuff was absorbing it before the stuff on the bottom got it. Huh, maybe we should try it on a tray and see what happens. Let's do that. So here we are again with the Insta Snow. Remember it's a polymer substance that's man-made. And guess what? I'm gonna tell you something really cool about this. You know where this is used? You're not gonna believe it. In baby diapers. 
Why do you think it's used inside baby diapers? Uh-huh, it's to absorb something. It's to absorb pee. Yeah, I said it, but it's so cool because it absorbs water too. And we're gonna be able to watch and see how fast this grows. Do you remember when we were doing it in the test tube? Look, it's grown all the way out of the test tube now. But now we're gonna see what it does on the surface of this tray. I am gonna just, wait, I should just do a little bit at a time so that we can see what a little bit does. Are you ready? Get set, go. Whoa, do you see it growing? Now let's see what happens when I pour this whole cup of water on it. Watch. It's gonna be amazing. Oh, it's absorbing really fast. Look at that. It's growing and absorbing all of the water. There's no more liquid there. It's all gone inside of the Insta Snow. So here's the cool thing. The polymer soaks up the water using the process of osmosis. The water molecules pass through a barrier from one side to the other, and it stays inside the polymer, and it absorbs it makes it swell up bigger and bigger oh my goodness so much water in there and it's still holding it on look at that now it looks like there might be some more water inside of it right a little bit more wet inside than on the outside and you know what when we did it in the test tube the water took over and left some dry on the bottom. And this time the dry is out on the sides. So if I wanted to make it grow bigger around the sides, I just have to pour a little water on the sides and watch that grow. Wow. Are you wondering what it feels like? Well, hopefully you'll be able to find out and get this yourself but I'm gonna put my hand in it and see if it will make an impression like we make impressions in the snow. And I'm gonna tell you that it feels squishy and wet and cold like snow. How does it do that? I wonder if I can make my hand print. Let's see. I see it, do you see it? One, two, three, four, five fingers. One more time, squish. Wow, that's so cool. And if I stir it with my fingers, I see that some of it is still not all the way wet. There's still some dry around the edges. So do you remember how much we started with? We started with just a little pile like this and it grows a hundred times its size. So I am betting that I could put more water in this and it would keep growing. What do you think? I think it could. And what's cool about this is that if you let it dry out and the water dries out from it, it goes back to powder. Pretty cool. C-O-O-L. Let's do another experiment. All right, so we talked about absorption. Now we're gonna talk about suspension. That means that something is going to be suspended and not combined. So it would be separated. And this is a cool project called Ublek. So we're gonna take cornstarch and water 
and we're going to combine them. But we're not going to combine it willy-nilly, and there's really no measurements for this. It's going to be in as fast as I need it to go until it gets to the right consistency. That means it needs. To, I need to feel it so I can make sure that it's where it needs to be. So I'm going to be taking the water and I'm going to pour it and mix it into the cornstarch. So I'm using a lot of cornstarch this time just so that you can see it. And I'm going to stir the water into it. This is the fun part for you guys to do because it gets harder to stir. I'm just not really sure why. So I'm pouring the water in and I'm stirring, but it's really hard to stir, even though I can see the water there. And I don't know why it's so hard to stir. Hmm. Let's see. Why is that happening? I'm going to add more water. Let's see. This is going to do it. Mm. Boy, I have to use my muscles to move it. What is going on here? Oh, it's really, really hard. The grains of the starch from the cornstarch do not dissolve. Some things like flour will dissolve. Salt will dissolve. Sugar will dissolve. But there's something different about cornstarch and water. It doesn't dissolve. It suspends itself in the water. And as you can see, kind of drips a little bit like slime. And it's hard to stir. What's really cool is I'm going to show you a cool thing about this. So I'm going to put this in my hand. This is the best part. And you can touch it too when you make it. But I'm going to roll it into a ball. It's going to be a hard ball. Look, it's hard. Roll it, I'm rolling it. Is it water or is it cornstarch? What is it? It's a ball. Wait, wait, what's happening? It's, it's not a ball anymore. It's melting. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It was a ball. I'm just going to make it a ball again because, you know, I can suspend the cornstarch in the water. The molecules are just spreading out across the water. It's fine. It's going to be a ball again. Look, I can roll it. Yeah, it's a ball. Wait, what's going on with it? It's melting again. How is this happening? Oh, because it's not combining. It combines for a minute when I force it to combine, but then when it's left on its own, it separates. Huh. That's so interesting, isn't it? So I can make a ball that's smaller. I can chunk it apart, but really it's kind of like a liquid and it feels super cool. This is something that you really need to try at home but make sure you put it in a container and maybe do it outside because it is a little messy, but it's super fun. Let's try something else. Okay, everybody, we're gonna make the famous slime this time. So here's the ingredients that you'll need to make it. First, we'll use some Elmer's glue. I like to use the clear kind. This comes in a five ounce bottle, which is exactly what you need for the slime recipe that I have. So we have clear glue and we put it in a container. Then you need half a cup of water. These are great things to be able to measure. Measuring is all part of science too. So we're gonna add the water to the glue. Already measured it out. And then this is the point that you would put food coloring in. I chose green cause you know, what slime isn't green? 
Well, you can make it any color that you want. And I'm gonna put in, let's say five drops, count with me. One, two, three, four, five. I had to squeeze it very carefully. That's sometimes what you need to do when you're experimenting. Let's go very slow so that you can see how much you might need and not do too much because sometimes you can ruin your experiment. So now I have glue, water, and food coloring. And I want you to notice that there's something going on inside of this container. The glue is on the bottom and the water and the food color is on top. The water and food color is suspended on top of the glue. Which thing is lighter and which thing is heavier in this container? The glue is on the bottom, and if gravity is working, that's the heavier one. The water and the food coloring is lighter. That's the one that's on top. Now I'm gonna use a spoon and I'm going to mix it together. Mix it together so that both things, or actually all three things, are really well mixed. Can you see it changing? Now they're combined into a mixture. No longer suspended. All right, now I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of baking soda. I'm gonna add the baking soda and I'm gonna stir again really good. I'm trying to keep it in the container. Okay, and then the last thing that you add is the saline solution. So saline solution you can get at the drugstore. And this is gonna be one tablespoon of saline solution. Which thing is bigger, a teaspoon or a tablespoon? That's right, tablespoon. So this is more than what we put in for baking soda, but it's still not a lot. So once I pour this in, I have to stir it quickly and let's see what happens. First, I wanna see the consistency of what it is now, and then we'll check the consistency of what it is afterwards. Consistency is how thick or how liquidy it is. This looks pretty liquidy, doesn't it? I think that when we pour in the saline solution, a chemical reaction is gonna happen. We're gonna make a concoction called slime. Here we go, are you ready? And if I need some more saline solution, I might need to have my saline solution at the ready. I'm ready, the cap is open. I'm gonna put it to the side. Here it goes. One, two, three. Stir really fast. It says in the directions. And it's getting harder to stir. I don't know why. Wait, something's happening to the consistency. What? What is that? It's not liquidy anymore. It's turning into slime. Slime, beautiful, wonderful slime. Wow, it's really slimy. I wonder if I put a little more saline solution in, what might happen? Should I try it? Yeah? Okay. I'm gonna just give it a little squirt. And now I'm gonna stir it up again and see if anything else happens to it. 
but oh, it's like becoming spider webbish inside. Ooh, it's getting out. It's slimy and coming out into long, twisted pieces of slime. Ooh, I like it. I want to feel it. Ooh, it's cold and it's slimy and it's sticky and it's making like spider webs and cool stuff. It's pretty messy right now though. I wonder if I added a little bit of saline solution to my hand, if it would make it better and easier to work with. Oh, look, it's coming off. That's kind of cool. And it's getting a little easier to work with. Hmm, and I can kind of pull off the small pieces and then it gets even thicker. Let me put a little bit more. This is a fun experiment. Oh, wow. Now it's kind of like a jelly, but it holds together. It's almost like it went from a liquid to a solid. It changed consistency and it got easier to work with. So that was fun. I really liked it. Let's try something else. Okay, here's another one that we're gonna be doing using liquids that change. This time, we're gonna be making silly putty. So the first thing that we're gonna be using is some glue. Elmer's glue, white glue. We used clear glue with the last one. And we're gonna need a little bit of water. So I'm just gonna do a squirt of water, which is actually what the recipe calls for, squirt. Then we're going to use some pink food coloring. I do like some pink silly putty. Let's count five. One, two, three, four, five drops. Again, I used my muscles in a very small way. So that I only got five drops. If I squeezed hard, it would have been a mess. And now, I'm not gonna stir it until I put this in. This is liquid starch. You can get this at the grocery store in the laundry department. So this says to take a squirt of liquid starch. And I'm using my technology of my dropper to squeeze and squirt in liquid starch. Now you see it, but it's not really doing much. On the top, again, we have the same thing going on, that there's something suspended on top. It's the water and food coloring and the starch. And on the bottom is the glue. And now comes the time where I'm gonna change liquid into a solid. And I'm going to stir it up. Watch and see what happens next. What is happening? What is happening? Whoa, interesting. I thought it was gonna be pink and I see purple. Do you see purple? And it's not liquid anymore. It's turning into some sort of a solid. I'm gonna just keep stirring it because what happens is that the liquid starch reacts with the glue molecules and it joins them together into one giant molecule. And the new compound is able to absorb large amounts of water and it makes a putty substance. So I'm gonna put some more 
start chin and see what happens next. Because it's still kind of liquidy, isn't it? A little bit. And if I want to make silly putty, putty is a little more solid than that. Oh, now it's changing. When you guys make this, you'll see it goes from sticky to not sticky anymore. And it's still kind of sticking to the sides of this cup. But the more starch I put in, the bigger the molecule. Because again, it's binding to the glue molecule. And it's kind of like slime, but it's not like slime. Because the more I add, it's like rope now. And the more I work with it, the harder it gets. Now I'm going to take it out and I'm going to touch it. This is the fun part. Now the slime was sticking to my hand a little bit, but this stuff, if I do it right, and I add a little more starch to it, and work it together, this is pretty messy action, but I love to be messy. Messy's fun, isn't it? I like to experiment with messy because you learn so much. Now, still a little sticky. I'm going to put a little more starch on it. Now it's starting to get more into the putty stage. And it's getting a little harder. And it's holding together pretty well. Can you see it now? Now it's a little more putty-like rather than sticky. Maybe a little more starch and we'll see what happens. Yikes. Now it's just getting to be one big glob of putty. So fun. So one of the things that I really like to do with putty and I really like to do with slime too is to use my scissors because it helps me practice my scissor skills and it's also really fun. So if I hold this up, it's gonna get longer and longer and I'm just gonna cut it and cut it and cut it and cut it. Could you cut liquid? No, you have to cut solids. Cut, cut. So this was a liquid and now it's a solid. So cool. Cut, 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 cut. Cut, 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 cut. Now let's cut to another show. Hi everybody, we're gonna be doing some chemical reaction this time. So we have baking soda. You can find that in your pantry. And we have vinegar that I've poured into this. You probably have some of that too. And then I have some test tubes that I've set up and some food coloring. So what I did was I took a funnel and I put the funnel inside of the test tube and I put the baking soda in, but you can do it in any container at all. So I have it already set up. So there's baking soda and food coloring in these. And then I'm gonna take my technology of a dropper and I'm going to extract some vinegar out of the cup. And then I'm going to put some, squeeze it right into this test tube. I'm wondering if you know what's gonna happen. We are gonna have a chemical reaction after all. I wonder if it will just sit there and be a liquid. I'm wondering if it will become a solid or I'm wondering if it will do something else. If you haven't done this experiment before, it's way fun. All right, ready? Keep your eye on this test tube and let's see what color it's gonna become. Whoa, what color do you see? Yellow, awesome. 
awesome. Do you have a guess what this one might be? Are you ready? Let's see, I'm going to extract some more vinegar. I have it in my dropper and I'm gonna drop it in and let's see, whoa! What color was that? Green, that's right. Hmm, let's see what color this is gonna be. I'm trying to trick you because I have the different colors in front. Some of them are right and some of them are not. So the yellow was yellow, but the red was really green. Let's see which color this might be. Is it gonna be green? Nope, because that was green. Let's see, do you have an idea? All right, let's try it. Here we go. Whoa, blue. That really was blue. Wow, and it really went far. Let's try this last one. What color do you think it's gonna be? Use your mental ability. Look at the colors of the food coloring. Can you tell which one we haven't done yet? I bet you know which one it is. Ready, set, go. Whoa, red. That's right, it was red. Now I wonder, hmm, if I would mix yellow that's left in the bottom of this and I put it in with the red. And I add some more of this. Actually, let's see if it will work with just vinegar. Whoa, what color did it turn? Orange. So what colors did we use? We used yellow and red and it turned it orange. Hmm, that's pretty cool. I'm wondering what will happen if I take the blue and I put a little red food coloring in with the blue, maybe one drop, one drop. I had to use my muscles really carefully that time. And then we're going to use some more vinegar. What's gonna happen? Do you think it's gonna change a color? Of course, I added red to blue, but what color will it be? Let's see. Ready, set, go. Still looks blue to me. Hmm, I wonder if I added more red to it. One, two. I wonder if it will still work. Do you think it still has enough baking soda in there? Let's see. Whoa! Hmm, it looks black to me. I thought it was going to be something different. Sometimes when you do science experiments, they don't turn out exactly the way you thought they were going to, but you learn something. I learned that it didn't turn out the way I thought it was gonna turn out, but I was also surprised that there was enough baking soda in there that I could do that experiment three times. Let's try another one with the same thing, baking soda, and food coloring and vinegar, but in a different container. So I've put some baking soda and some food coloring into a clear recycled egg carton. And I made a little bit in each one of the egg holes so that we can do a bunch of little tiny experiments with the baking soda and the food coloring and the vinegar. So I have vinegar in a cup with my handy dandy dropper and I'm gonna extract some vinegar out. We're gonna see all the different colors that we're going to make as we go along. And I'm gonna tell you how this is actually working because it's kind of fun to know how this chemical reaction is actually happening. So I'm gonna squeeze into the first one and what color do we see? Oh, it's 
going down into the other one, I see blue in this one. Let's see, and green in that one. Whoa, it's overflowing into the blue. That's kind of cool. So when the vinegar hits the baking soda, the baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. That's the name of what that particular material is. And it's a base, while the vinegar is acetic acid. An acid reacts together with the sodium bicarbonate. Woo, that's yellow. And the carbonic acid that's very unstable and it breaks apart into water and carbon dioxide. And so it gives off all the carbon dioxide when it becomes bubbly. What color is that one? That's right, that's red. Let's do that green one again. Oh, it's leaking over to the blue. Let's see if we can make, whoa, blue green. That's a pretty color, isn't it? So the liquid of the vinegar, which is the acid, going into the sodium bicarbonate, which is the baking soda, combined with the food coloring to kind of make it cool, has a reaction that makes carbon dioxide, which is the bubbles, and water. And that's what pushes it up and out. Whoa, that's a good green. Let's see this blue, yes. And I don't know if you're noticing, but I made a pattern out of my baking soda and food coloring. So it goes yellow, green, red, blue, yellow, green, blue, red, green, no, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red. Yellow, green, red, blue, yellow, green. Now let's see if these match up or not. If they're gonna match this color, it's gonna be blue. Let's see, oh, yes it is. And this would be red. And let's see if we can mix them. We tried to do it with the other one and it didn't work. But if we can get a color Miss Mary thought we were gonna get, almost. It's purple, a little bit, a little bit purple. Let's do this one. That's right, it's green. What color's this one? Yellow, blue again. Green again. Whoa, a lot of carbon dioxide came out of that one. Let's see if I can make a lot of carbon dioxide come out of that blue one. Yeah. Ooh, it's leaking over into this one. Let's see. Is it gonna be purple or red? Hmm, interesting. And that one is yellow. That one is not showing me. Oh, green. And the last one is yellow. Yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow, green. Pattern. Fun. You can do this at home too in any container. Let's see what we're gonna do next. Now we're gonna do another experiment using some of the same materials that we used the last time, baking soda and vinegar. Do you remember what happens when the baking soda combines with the vinegar? It makes carbon dioxide bubbles. So now we're going to make that happen, but we're gonna blow up a balloon with those bubbles. Are you ready? Let's start. Okay, so we have a water bottle that has some food coloring in it, and I have a funnel that's gonna help me pour the vinegar straight into the water bottle. And now we have green vinegar inside the water bottle. 
And now I'm going to take some baking soda and I put some already using the funnel into this balloon. So the, the um, baking soda is in the bottom of the balloon, not on the top. And then what I'm gonna do is gonna take the balloon and I'm gonna put it over the top of the water bottle. Get it on there good. But I'm not putting the baking soda in there until I'm ready. So I'm gonna get the bottle and the balloon connected really well. And now I'm gonna lift up, move that out of the way. I'm gonna lift up the balloon so that the baking soda goes in and then we're gonna see what happens. Do you think it'll blow up the balloon? Will it use the carbon dioxide? Let's see. Whoa, it's blowing up the balloon. How big will it get? It's falling over. It's still bubbling in there. And the balloon is still getting bigger. I wonder if it will get bigger or if it will change when the bubbles go down. So the bubbles went down. Is the balloon still holding the air? Is it still holding the carbon dioxide? It is. And when we blow into a balloon, our breath is carbon dioxide too. And we could blow into the balloon just like that and make a balloon with our carbon dioxide. I hope you like that one. Let's do another one. So for our last experiment, that's right, the last one, we're gonna be doing the Mentos challenge. We're gonna be using a candy called Mentos and diet soda, not regular soda, diet soda, cause it works better. And this is gonna be root beer. So what happens is when people make soda, they put carbon dioxide into the syrup and the water that's in there to make the bubbles. Do you remember that we talked about carbon dioxide that came out of the combination of the vinegar and baking soda and also comes out of our breath? Well, that's what's inside this bottle. So when I open it up, it's gonna be fizzy. And then when the Mentos go in, it's gonna be really cool chemical reaction. I wonder how it will happen. And I wonder how high it will go. We're gonna find out in just a minute. Okay, so I've opened up the bottle of the diet root beer and I have seven Mentos, which is what the recipe calls for, seven specifically. And there's 14 in each Mentos thing. So you can do two experiments when you get that. And then the trick to this is to put all the Mentos in at the same time if you can, because you don't wanna be dropping one at a time. So I put them in this test tube to make it easier to get them all in. And the recipe actually tells you to tape them together on one side and then just drop them all in. But the tape wasn't working for me, so I'm trying a different way to do it. So I'm going to take the Mentos and I'm gonna pour them in as fast as I can all at the same time and we're gonna see what happens. Are you ready, set, let's do it. Woo! Oh my goodness, that was cool. It made a really big geyser. And now look at it, there's carbon dioxide all in the bottle. And most of the soda came out into the container. So cool. Thank you for joining us for the STEM program on concoctions. This program is being brought to you by the Coalition for Children and Falmouth Public Schools through the CFCE grant from the Massachusetts Department of Early Education and Care.